Shalom Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live, and finally guys, finally this is actually going to work, and I'm so glad to see this going to work. Yanka, my gosh, honey, it's been a long time since I've seen you. Yeah. Where have you been? Well, you know, I was sick, and then I had my sister here from Europe for three weeks, yeah. so we had some fun on the beach, and... Yeah, you definitely got darker. <laughs> I didn't get dark, <laughs> though. That's right. So, but I'm so happy to be back in the ministry and we will do our regular chats now, right? Yeah, we're going to get back into doing yes. this because so many people ask about you constantly. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's like, you know, like, uh, excuse me, Steve, get us. Uh, nice to see you, Steve. By, by the way, where's Yana at? Oh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, are we live? Is everything okay? We, we can are you live. Check if they can hear and, us. Uh, yeah, and let's just run over and check with everybody. Yes. Yeah, it looks everything's going good. The, the stream is kind of weak because we have a lot of things going on right now on mm -hmm. uh, on our internet, and so I think maybe we should do something about that. Uh, we're gonna have to change the internet system here. Uh, okay, so well, I will probably, as we talk about the different frames, I will probably take the frames off because we have a guest coming on. Adam yes, Green. in fact, because we had a hard time coming on for 15 minutes, Adam Green has to come on first because he's waiting. So All right. uh, we're going to invite Adam Green from No More News to catch us up on yeah. happenings in uh, Chabad, Noahide Laws, Zionism. So why don't we call him right now, Steve, and right. start with him. Let me see if I can get him to pop up here. Okay. Adam. Hello. Hello. Man. Good evening, my friend. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Uh, yes, and welcome to our show, Adam. And uh, most of our listeners already know Adam Green from No More News. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. Yes, he does. And since we were out, Adam, I was out for so long now. Uh, mm. You are doing a lot of research and you keep up to date on what's happening in the world of Zionism, Chabad, Noahide laws. So I was hoping you can kind of catch us up and tell us about what's the latest news on all of these things. Well, my last couple of videos, uh, four days ago I did one called Who Put Them in Charge? And that was, I was playing like a propaganda video that the ADL made back in 2009. And a uh, Zionist report had found it and posted it. And then he was actually censored on YouTube for the video, but then appealed a few days later and they, they allowed it back up. But in this ADL video, it talks about Abe Foxman. <clears throat> how they are having they brought about a third of congress to israel at, at that time in the nine in the night uh what was it 2009 mm -hmm. and also they were that they were training police taking police over to israel to do trips to do training and they were all talking about creating the relationship with them and that they could trust them and count on them it was uh it was just crazy Mm -hmm. You know, there is an organization called Jewish Voice for Peace, I think, and uh, they're kind of exposing how Israeli IDF abuses Palestinians and uh, all of that, and uh, they actually had some success. Uh, they're petitioning, uh, helping people to petition states to stop for the police to go train in Israel because what Israeli mm -hmm. police what they do is they send our policemen to Israel and they are training on Palestinians and all of the things that are doing with Palestinians and using the same techniques and bringing them here to United States and then they're using them on our own citizens and the, they had mm -hmm. actual success Adam in a state of North Carolina I believe uh, where they outlawed for police to uh, train with Israelis, but I don't know about any other state. I think every other state still sends our policemen to train in Israel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, yeah, and then it, go ahead, Stephen. You yeah. know, I was going to mention though when Yana was saying this is uh, uh, I, one of my uncles uh, used to be the uh, top cop of the state of Florida and him and uh, my wife Yana were sitting together discussing that very issue 
And, uh, you know, he said he, I kind, of, he kind of wished he was back in the position he was in because he said he would actually oppose it. He said that this is the worst thing the state of Florida has done is allowed uh, a foreign country to train with our police. He said police training should remain at a local level. And uh, he said we shouldn't, be, we, we shouldn't be training with military and we shouldn't be training especially with a foreign nation. Right. And he's not against Jews because my grandmother, of course, his own mother right. uh, is a, was a Jewish woman. He but said, he so. wasn't aware. He's retired now, but he wasn't aware of the fact that they're yeah. training with uh, Israelis. And he was very, uh, very troubled over that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then in the rest of that video, I went over how the ADL is behind a lot of the censorship on uh, all the social media companies and on YouTube and Jonathan Greenblatt and that the UN ambassador of Israel was at the UN saying that he wanted anti-Semitism to be uh, punished mm -hmm. and a crime. And uh, and you know that uh, it's interesting, Greenblatt, Jonathan Greenblatt at the ADL, he wears the, the red Kabbalah bracelet, so it makes me wonder, uh, you know, when we're reading these books on the Kabbalah and talking about uh, right. some of the stuff that's associated with it, that's he's right. got the wristband. Yes. Well, what else is new? I know that you made a video on the um, NSA. Uh, who, who is the head of NSA now? It's the now woman the... that is now the head of the yeah. NSA. Right. This is can terrible. You, can you, Adam, tell us about that? Yeah, it's Ann Newberger. She's the the head of NSA cybersecurity. So, you know, I've, we've been seeing so much with Israel and their tech dominance, especially in cybersecurity. Uh, I've done a bunch of videos on that, one of them with Netanyahu and his plan to, to rule the world with advanced technology. And, and this woman is from uh, Borough, I want to say Borough Park, it's Borough something, it's, I think it's near Crown Heights in New York, it's a very you know, Jewish area, mm -hmm. and she went to a, a yeshiva girls school, and, and she's top one for NSA cybersecurity. You know, also she worked for the Pentagon, and uh, there was, uh, they tasked her with trying to fix the problem of our American soldiers getting blown up by uh, mines on the road. So she went to Raphael, an Israeli company, to, to design some, uh, you know, protection for that, for the trucks. And then she got that sold to America. So she, that, if that's, there's any indication of her past, She's going to be giving all these contracts to Israeli companies under Unit 8200 control, under Mossad control. And they've already, with the Promise software that Robert Maxwell pushed everywhere, got back doors. You know, Intel is there, uh, Apple's there, Google's there, Microsoft is there. So a, a lot of, uh, basically all the technology, the future is in technology, is being consolidated and uh, controlled over there in Jerusalem. You know, this or is Tel Aviv, what you, Beersheba. Yeah, what yeah. you're saying is very interesting, Adam, because as we uh, mentioned before, this book, Jewish Utopia, and, and they have this plan for world domination. This is in their religion. This is in Judaism. Mm -hmm. Right, that's right. That's in their religion to build mm -hmm. so-called Jewish kingdom. And then there is this um, Rabbi Baxt who wrote a book about Kabbalah being connected to technology and how they have to mm -hmm. have a dominion of technology. And now you're telling us how everything that, you know, Chabad Jew, this woman is actually head of NSA and they are moving everything, the entire technology to mm -hmm. Israel. Let, I want to throw something in here as right. well. And this is especially for you, Adam. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, with me being Jewish, being born Jewish from Jewish parents, and from mm -hmm. that being part of my background, and the fact that at one time, I hate to admit when I say a Zionist, because, I, but, but it's true, you know, whether I looked at it more from a religious standpoint or not, there's still the political aspect as well. And I can, I can tell you guys from, from experience, you know, and it's not to say that I don't love my country, I don't love my people there, but the problem is I see what the country and the people are doing, which I didn't see with the blinders that I had on uh, mm -hmm. not so many years ago. And I can tell you from, from experience, the loyalty, even though I'm born in America, I'm an American citizen, there is a loyalty that outweighs the American loyalty right. when it comes to Jewish people. And, and, I, and I know that 
this, uh, you know, we shouldn't hate people that are like that, but we have to realize too as, as, as American citizens that it is not in the best interest of America when we are allowing uh, people to, uh, to gain higher ranking positions like this that naturally are going to gravitate towards a loyalty that is outside the scope of the United States. And so if I can make that where people can really understand, I know personally what that's like. Uh, you know, and, and I've been to the Knesset uh, before. I, I've spoke to the, to the Knesset members in Israel. I had a very close relationship there. And that's a dangerous loyalty uh, when it comes to the safety of the United States. Now, as long as Israel would be an ally of the United States, which they're not officially an ally, that's another problem. And then, of course, <laughs> the fact right. that we know now what's really going on. And so that's what it just sends a, a terrorism in my own heart. Not terrorism, but, you know, terrifies me is the fact that I know the plans. I have connections with Mossad as well. I know what they're planning on doing in this nation. And I was told they want to genocide our people here. Tell us the name of this woman again, Adam, the head of NSA. Anne, New Anne Newberger, and she comes from one of the richest families in the United States. Uh, her father, uh, I, I, either father or her father-in-law was like uh, the founder of some hu uh, huge ra uh, rabbinite school, mm -hmm. and, um, and and actually the guy the he's known as the bro the school that she attended uh, was a Chabad rabbi was in charge of it, and his name was the Brooklyn Bundler, mm -hmm. Rabbi Milton Balcony uh, from New York Hedge Fund. Yeah. So he got in trouble for ex extortion of some money. Mm -hmm. So that's what's really interesting is that she's a member of Chabad organization. So she's. A I'm Chabad. not sure that she is actually. Well, um, she spoke at Chabad events, so she, you know, it's hard to be in the Jewish world, I think, and not, you know, encounter Chabad at this point because aren't they just everywhere? Well, you here, know, here's how, let me kind of yeah. clarify that right there. Uh, if she went to a Chabad school, she's a Chabad member. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing is, she may not. It may not be uh, her uh, her choice of religious association, but if you went to a Chabad school, you're going to be a Chabad member one way or the other. If she speaks on Chabad events, she, I would say, ninety nine percent a. Chabad well, she didn't go to a Chabad school and she didn't go to a Chabad synagogue. Right. Speaking at the Chabad event doesn't make you a Chabad Jew. Now, she, she, she's ultra she's ultra orthodox, okay. but it says my family is Satmar, old style Satmar. Do you know what that is? Okay, yeah. So she's not actually Chabad then, uh, per mm -hmm. se, but uh, but you know she's got the connections there because she did go to a school like that. So there's there's just like in Christianity, you got Baptist, Methodist, uh, Presbyterian, mm -hmm. etc. The same thing in Judaism. Mm -hmm. You have all the different sects. Chabad is just one of those sects there. Uh, in Judaism, the difference is with Chabad, the Chabad organization is they're far more political than any of the other uh, Hasidic organizations in Judaism. I also want to mention, because to kind of clear it up for people, that um, Chabad is actually a cult. It's, it's, uh, when you look at the website about cults and cult watch, they are actually cited as a cult, so it is a well-known cult. The problem is that this particular cult is getting hold of governments everywhere. It's getting hold in our government as well. We lost power completely. Did we? Adam, are you still there? I'm here. Okay, good. Yeah, we lost power, but, it, but it, we didn't lose Adam. That's good. Okay, and we are recording. Uh, do you see what I'm putting up oh, on the okay. screen? Okay, maybe we didn't lose power. That was just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, was okay. show, I was showing you, you were talking about Chabad, I wanted to show you guys this. Gotcha, okay. Yes, yes it that. is a Jewish cult, and they are, they are kind of divided over Chabad in Israel. There well, is a lot of rabbis, Steve, that disagree with Chabad, because yeah. Chabad specifically believed that Schneerson is the Messiah. And, you, you know, know, his picture, as uh, is, Adam has it up here on the screen right. for you, uh, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson, his picture is everywhere in Israel. I mean, mm -hmm. for many, I mean, for as long as Israel's probably, well, not as long as they've been a state, but for ever since this. This is in the airport. Out. I took this yeah. in the airport. 
Yeah, it's it's everywhere in yeah. Israel. And it's all it's on the buses, it's on the pillars there, mm -hmm. and, and and of course Chabad is the one of the is, is this one of the strongest Orthodox groups there. Right, um, and here all over the world, they sure. they are gaining power, and they have. That's these... the main synagogues in, this, in Florida. I mean, we know we used to go to it. So right, we, we and then the uh, they are gaining power all over the government. I'm talking Russia, China, everywhere, yes. entire world, uh, South America, and uh, they are the ones that in our own government, in a public law, one o two one four, they are cited. Schneerson is cited as you know. Uh, the example and a person who fought for righteousness right. and education and this is where Noah Hyde Law, he was a promoter of Noah Hyde Law, he started the whole thing yeah. in 1970s or the ones who do all the prayers in the Congress and Senate as well. Exactly. So this is what is very strange that Chabad people who speak in Chabad organizations are gaining uh, power in our governments like NSA organization and other organizations they're basically taking over yeah. uh, the important positions in in governments oh my gosh you know what that reminds me as well and I knew this from when I used to be a part of this that was one of the things that was said that the more they can get control in mm -hmm. different governmental circles and corporations uh, in the United States, the better they can take control. And that's not just the United States, it's also in other places like Russia. Right. Putin's uh, chief rabbi is well, a, Chabad, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. a Chabad rabbi. Okay, Adam, anything uh, else is uh, going on? Yeah, yeah, you guys were talking about uh, you know her high-level position and her obvious loyalty that she's going to have to to Israel. And, um, you know, this is a huge issue, this uh, dual loyalty thing, because they have it that this is defined as anti-Semitism for anybody to criticize their loyalty at all, to accuse them of having divided or dual or, you know, all Israel first loyalty. And um, <clears throat> in the documentary Defamation about the ADL, they do some interviews with some, some, uh, some rich uh, philanthropists, some Jewish uh, phil philanthropists, and they were like, yes, uh, we, well, we're patriots of America, we love America, but it's like our, our husband or our wife, where Israel is like our child. So they do, like, if you, they had to choose really between one or the other, they would choose Israel in a lot of cases. Sure, that's right. it's the way it's the way I was at one time as well, you know, because the thing is, is you know, the, it's really it's a difficult situation, and it's difficult for for Christians to understand as well, because Christians are looking at it. Oh, okay, they were they were supposed to return to the Promised Land. Well, Jews were returning to the Promised Land under the Turkish Ottoman Empire back in the 1800s, and they weren't going over there killing all the uh, inhabitants of the land. So the scripture was being fulfilled under the Ottoman Empire. What happened in 1948, that was not scripture being fulfilled. Scripture was already being fulfilled. All right. So in 1948, this was the this was yes yeah, Daniel 11 being fulfilled. The, the violent among your people are going to try to establish the vision. Yeah, that's what you were getting fulfilled there. A bunch of violent people coming in to kill all kill all the n natives of the land there. Not to mention that coming back to a land is actually coming to Christ. Exactly. It has exactly. nothing to do with physical land yes. of Israel today as it stands today because yeah. as Christ says it's, by the fruits you shall know them and look at their fruits right it's a violence and also yeah. they're also no and they are want they want to impose international law which is a Noahide law which we're going to talk about very soon and that has absolutely nothing to do with Christ and Jewish kingdom earthly kingdom has nothing to do with heaven, kingdom of heaven Christ talks about. So this return of Jews to the land in the Bible should be interpreted spiritually right now. It's a, it's a return to Christ, right, Steve? Well, the thing is, is the, the one thing that most Christians look at, and, and that is they're looking at Zechariah's prophecy, uh, that, that, that they will look upon him whom they have pierced. And that's where it really comes down to, because John in his gospel shows that that was fulfilled 2,000 years ago. But the fact that we see that Zechariah also shows they don't know what tribal order they are, I believe it's a compound fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that there would be Jews in the promised land during that time, 
uh, when Christ is revealed to them. There will be a remnant there. That's, it's got to be for, for the sake of prophecy. But it doesn't mean that he give us the green light to go kill all the occupants of the land. We're not dealing with the Nephilim uh, in the state of Israel, except for maybe a reptilian group that come uh, mm -hmm. waltzing back into the country. Or that we should be, as Christians, that we should be supporting right now political state of Israel, but which is po po politics or secular Israel is just a cover because I even have today article yeah. to prove to people that they are making strong coalition with the religious group uh, the, the Netanyahu and the Likud party making coalition with the religious group who are building the temple, okay, building mm. the temple on the Temple Mount. They want to build a temple and build this Jewish kingdom and they say the law shall come out of Jerusalem and they're making Sanhedrin right, right. as an, in, you know, uh, the ru ruling body who will decide on a mattress of the law, which is extremely scary. But anyway, Adam, let's go back to you and tell us more more news that we missed on these three weeks. Yeah, well, um, you guys have the clip for the video that I played yesterday. Uh, there's a Chabad rabbi opened up with the prayer in Congress, and he mentioned the Noahide laws, and he also mentioned the Rebbe, and called the Rebbe Moshiach, and then also they were dancing, Chabad was dancing out in front of the Capitol with uh, Senator or, or Congressman, what was it, Ron Portman or Rob Portman. And this is the guy that is like uh, doing these bills, anti-BDS bills, you know, anti-Semitism bills and pushing this. And he's just dancing out in front with them as they're, you know, talking about Noahide laws. Yeah, before we're going to play that clip, Adam, I just want to remind people in the... Uh, our last chat together, Steve, or last before last chat, we have played a video where uh, Christians had a prayer. It was in uh, some kind of a, a governmental group of Christians. They had a prayer, and there was a Jewish woman protesting the prayer of Christians. Yes, I remember that. Remember and she that? got up and walked out. She got up, walked out, and she said that she was violated yeah. by mentioning Jesus Christ in her presence, right? Right. 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 And here we have that the, the, our government officials will call a Jewish Chabad rabbi to pray in our government office, in the United States government office. And he prays. And nobody protests. Mentions Noahide laws, mentions mm -hmm. Schneerson as a Messiah in our government office. Yeah. And there is no protest, it, nothing, <laughs> nobody protests. Just imagine if they had like a, a Islamic leader in there talking about Sharia laws. Right, Sharia laws and Mohammed, you know? That's Can right. you imagine that? So this is happening. This ha We showed a clip before how Rabbi prayed in 1990s. But right. now this is from which date, Adam? When did this happen? This was two days ago. Two days video. ago. Let's play the clip. Yeah. Okay, here we go. The prayer will be offered by our guest chaplain, Rabbi Kershon Afsar. Might need to turn up the, the volume. Yeah, let's try it again okay. from the beginning, Steve. Almighty God, Master of the Universe, I invoke your blessing today on the members of this honorable institution. Yeah, that volume. Yeah, the that's The House of Representatives volume. of the United States of America. May they humbly serve their constituencies, aware that creating just legislation is one of the seven laws that you, Almighty God, gave all humanity through Noah as detailed in Genesis. Almighty God, as a descendant of Hasidic Jews who fled the Stalinist regime that persecuted religious observance, I am especially grateful and blessed to be in America, the country called the nation of kindness by the great spiritual leader of our generation, the Lubavitcher Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson. We thank you for the freedom we have here to practice our faith and we pray for those who still suffer persecution around the world. While legislating by definition includes differences of opinion and rigorous debate, I pray that we nevertheless anticipate our shared bright future in the time of the redemption and thus remain one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Okay, let's stop this, Steve. I mean, and, and the rest of the American people say amen, they don't protest, they don't say anything. 
this this is going on in where U.S. House. There was a Why not? They have the education uh, education day bill where it's in there. Okay, so basically he mentioned seven Noahide laws. He calls Schneerson Moshiach anointed. Okay. And then he speaks about time of redemption, which is now. He speaks about that we are in a time of redemption. Now, mm -hmm. according to Judaism, the messianic time of redemption, that they say that it's now, their redemption is the Jewish kingdom with Sanhedrin established in Jerusalem as a ruling body and with the Noahide laws upon all of the Gentile nations. So this is basically the uh, translation of his message. This is absolutely insane, Adam, that this is going on without any protest from Christians. And that's right. I know. We're probably the only ones talking about it. And it's funny. He says they always try to just kind of like sneak the Noahides on everybody, kind of like the Cohen guy from uh, Noahide.org. He goes to the UN. He kind of tries to say, you're all you all need to follow the Noahide laws. Right. Right. Exactly. So, but, you know, what concerns me, Adam, is that all of these pastors are not even mentioning that this is happening. They're avoiding the subject, either mm -hmm. avoiding the subject, not mentioning it, or they are for it. They're actually saying Noahide laws are good. There is nothing mm -hmm. wrong. We have one pastor called Mark Biltz. Uh, I played his clip, it was two minutes or something like that. And on our previous chats, and he said that they're good, the Noahide laws are good, and he hopes that when Jesus Christ comes, he will impose them. And he, he's a <laughs> Christian pastor. So That's amazing. I wow. know, that's amazing. Well, other pastors are completely avoiding the subject, you know. So a very few, very few pastors in Christianity will even, even speak about this, but this is an absolute blasphemy, this prayer in a U.S. house. And it, um, it, he also tries to kind of trick everybody saying that, you know, the, the Noahides come from Genesis, but really they, they, they come from the Talmud, correct? That's but, exactly right. Yes, Talmud. he says, right. as you know, Noah, seven laws of Noah as, as described in the book of Genesis. There is no there such is, thing. Right, as you read not. the Bible, you can read it as many times as you want. You will never find seven Noahide laws anywhere. Uh, they are completely Talmudic. They come out of Talmud. That's where they are spelled out. Right. There's only a couple right. of issues in Genesis that Noah speaks about. Uh, and, of course, it's, it's not to, to eat the blood of the animal. Uh, and there's one or two. There's, I think there's two, and not to kill. And mm -hmm. that's it. He doesn't yeah. discuss anything else. So it's all fabrication. I mean, see, the thing is, is we have the Ten Commandments. What more did we need? They're rabbinic, you know, rabbinic uh, uh, invention, basically. This, yeah. this is why the ACLU spent all this time for the last uh, couple of decades taking the Ten Commandments out of the courthouses because they're wanting to put the Noahide laws in its place. In the future, once they prepare everything, you know, how they're preparing it right yeah. now. They're setting up the stage. Yes. Anything else? Because this is really crazy, this prayer again, to hear this two days ago. Can't believe it, Steve. Well, you know, Adam like. mentioned earlier about AI, uh, and, you know, it reminded me of uh, Vladimir Putin saying, whoever controls AI will control the world. And they and are controlling All that Adam AI. was talking about where Israel is getting control of all the uh, in, uh, artificial intelligence in America, the back doors, everything, it is showing you who is going to control the world. Mm. Yeah. The, the chat's saying that there's an echo. I'm not sure if it's coming from me or from you guys, but. Oh, okay. Let me see. Um, go ahead and keep do we talking. have a du double, double I'll, I'll, I'll double check it just to see. Okay. Is it echoed when I talk? Ah, uh, see what it is. I see what it is. Yeah, we got two different mics running on here. Let me see if I can shut it. It wasn't echo the whole time, entire time? Well, no, have, I don't think so. It, it may have been. Okay, that should have fixed the problem. Adam, talk, make sure I can pick you up, okay? Yeah, it, okay. he also mentioned that they had, you know, they're about rigorous debate. And, you know, in the Talmud, that's what they did was argue for, you know, hundreds of years with volumes of books. But when it comes to these issues in Zionism, there, there isn't a lot of debate and there's not a lot of honest conversation about it. It's all just dismissed and censored as anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Exactly. In Europe, it's already completely done. It's in other laws and it's imposed. 
and in mm -hmm. this country we have a little bit of freedom still left but as you see censorship right now on YouTube and on social media and mm -hmm. I'm afraid that these laws will pass here as well Adam right and, and the last thing that he said in that prayer was he talked about our shared role in the the, the true redemption to come or something like that and it's funny that the shared role that they keep the 613 uh, mitzvahs of the Torah and, and we're supposed to keep the seven Noahide laws and then uh, but we're supposed to be like devoted servants and, and basically you know worship them as the na nation of priests and, and God's chosen people yeah and do you, uh, do you have that book yeah. Kabbalah for the nations by Ginsburg handy uh, yeah, I, I have access to it. Yeah, but do you have it handy right there somewhere? I have the book in hard copy, or I could share screen with a lot of the, the best it. highlights you know, from it. I, I, I know I talk about this book a lot. However, mm -hmm. I highly recommend uh, for people, Christian people, to read this book. I consider this book a book of anti-humanity, criminal book, uh, racist book, supremacist book, okay, by a Chabad rabbi who is disseminating Noahide laws, putting them within a Kabbalah Sefirot tree. And if you don't know what Sefirot tree is, it's a Kabbalah tree where they have God Ein Sof on the top, uh, who is uh, revealed through ten emanations, and there is this huge snake uh, all through the tree. Okay, so. He's actually talking and he speaks what is actual Kabbalah for the nations because Kabbalah was a taboo a few years ago. I'm talking about five years back. You couldn't hear about Kabbalah for Gentiles. This is very brave of them. I, like now they're disseminating, oh, we all have to learn Kabbalah. But the Kabbalah for the Gentiles is a little bit different than Kabbalah for the Jews. Well, what is a Kabbalah for Gentiles, right? And when you open this book, you learn that actually it's Noahide laws. And he's explaining how they are reflected in that Sefirot Kabbalah tree. But the whole thing is about the fact that the Gentiles are lesser beings than Jews. They don't have that divine spark that Jews have. And our shared responsibility is based to, to bring about redemption or Geula, or, you know, that's Gula, like Gula is uh, to help the Jews. Uh, basically submit ourselves to Jews, uh, basically worship of Jewish people. And, and, that, you know, that's and what the, the book the, is the about. The bad thing is, it's everything that is totally opposite of what biblical mandate is. I exactly. Mean, I mean, you know, here, here the thing is, just, just like uh, Shapira, Rabbi Shapira and, 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 and uh, Mark Bills, when they were right. talking on there, there's Rabbi Shapira is telling the people that you're to come underneath the Jews and although he says, yeah, I agree there's a lot of problems with the Talmud that I don't agree with, especially the things about the Messiah, but don't worry about it. When the Messiah comes, he'll correct it. Well, the Messiah already come, and he already corrected it, and he told you that the Pharisees, because, you know, he got offended. He said, oh, Steve used the word Pharisee. I took personal offense to it. I said, well, Jesus called the Pharisees a bunch of serpents, vipers, and, and a generation, and a family of vipers, seed of vipers. I said, so take offense with him then. Take it up with him. He's the one that tell, called you out on who you really were. Right. Now, you know, now there is a debate where the New Testament is anti-Semitic. Uh, oh, they're going to take it they're out. They're going to try to remove certain passages from the New Testament as anti-Semitic. So I'm afraid that in the future, New Testament is going to be banned book. Well, you know, think about it. Think about this. This is a good one for you as well, Adam. The Pope of Rome has already banned Catholics from being able to use the divine name, the Tetragrammaton, the yod heh vav -Hey, Yehovah, Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, whatever you want to say to pronounce the name, they are banned by the Catholic Church from using it. It's not in prayers, not in songs, not in anything. Where did that come from? It came from Talmudic Jews uh, maybe I should say extreme Talmud. Yeah, because extreme, it's, extreme uh, it's a blasphemy and taking the name, you know, in, exactly. uh, without, uh, anyway, the blasphemy law. Right. They rather use Hashem. Hashem, Adonai. Which right. also means the rockets. <laughs> yes. It means yeah. there. Uh, it can mean, uh, you know, Different a lot of things, things it can actually mean. Go ahead, Adam. You wanted to say something. 
Uh, I was going to say, I, I, I remember a story I covered a while back that there was like a, I think it was a, a Jewish rabbi was in charge of a Christian group like some some big Christian organization for the first time a, a Jew was that was leading it mm -hmm. and I just I, I find that amazing um, Maimonides I think it was you guys that told me that there's actually a bust of Maimonides in in the capital of the United States okay. and that's that's who influenced all of this stuff right uh, uh, a Jewish rabbis running a Christian congregation well if you think about it Hagi and the um, Hagi, Mark Bills are inviting all of these rabbis to talk to the Jew to, to Christian people all yeah, the time yeah. and bridging them with uh, Christianity with Judaism, which is totally oxymoron because they're very opposite, opposite beliefs. What, what do you have up here? Memonides. Jewish philosopher, it's like, yes. yes, 13th century. Jewish law is containing a Pentateuch and in Talmudic literature. Okay, here we go. The and then, and then there's, and then there's this. This is Maimonides writes of one whose life changed the course of history, Jesus of Nazareth. Can you guys see that on the yes, screen? Yes, perfectly. perfectly. Okay, uh, that he imagined that he was the Messiah. He tried to actualize this, but failed. Instead of redeeming Israel and the entire world, his actions led to Israel being slain by the sword, their remnant to be scattered and humiliated, the Torah to be altered, and the majority of the world to be deceived into serving a God other than the one God. And then they also say that, you know, the Christianity worships one Jew as God, but they really need to worship all Jews to have true uh, salvation. So basically, Maimonides blamed Jesus for their dis uh, being uh, scattered all over the world, and he says he imagined he was a Messiah. Can you go back to to that uh, clip you had before? Well, actually, before what, you I want to see where his uh, where his uh, Maimonides picture is in the government. Oh. Okay, here we go. Here it is, the 23 marble relief portrait over the gallery doors of the house chamber in the U.S. Capitol. Depicts historical figures noted. Okay, that's where he is, Maimonides. Right over the doorway. Right. Yes, the one that said that Jesus imagined he was you, the Messiah. Do you realize what that means, though, when you put it over the doorway, Adam? See, Christ said that he is the door to the sheepfold. Mm. So if they put Maimonides emblem over the doorway they're saying that Mammonites is their shepherd or the Jewish rabbis and sages which yeah. Noah Heidlos tell you that you have to basically you know yeah. they're the ones who have a power of interpretation of the sub laws now I don't know if you have that clip again Adam we talked about it we showed it to people where Cohen in the United Nations in his Noahide.com has uh, already officially a decapitation as a punishment for breaking Noahide laws. One thing I'd like for him to mention as well while he's looking for that is yes. you, you mentioned Adam and this is something we've talked about before but I'd love for you to say it again. The Orthodox uh, Jewish community that's pushing these things they will, they say that you cannot just worship one man Jesus but you're to worship all Jews. Right. Yeah. As devoted servants to, to help them do whatever they need to rebuild the temple and, and you know, and, uh, and worship the Moshiach. And, you know, actually, I, uh, I just tweeted something out. Where was that? Oh, there's a new documentary coming out. Too. Okay, here it is. So here you guys will like this. Uh, let me share screen again real quick. There's going to be a danger coming. You know what it's going to be? Mm -hmm. Remember when Paul talks about uh, for the slaves to be loyal to their masters? They're going to use that one against the Christians. You watch. Well, you know that slavery officially was never abandoned by Jewish law. In a Jewish law, halakha, slavery is legal. And who are the slaves of Jews? Well, the Gentiles, according to Judaism. It's, it's coming, and I know it's this coming. From, I'm from, telling from, you, from this Mossad is why. people. It's coming, and they told me this. So what is this? Do we really need Moshiach by Rabbi Shemuel? Yeah, Ju JewishPress.com. I just just to see what they read here. The ingathering of all Jews and their acceptance of Moshiach will require a total about face for many. Oh wait, this isn't. Uh, 
also at this stage the nations of the world will accept the Jewish people's dominion of the Holy Land and Moshiach as the world's ruler. Wow. They will also accept the one God and observe his seven universal commandments as the divine spirit permeates the minds of humanity and everyone realizes the truth of God and his Torah. Wow, they tell you right to your face. That's what I'm saying. They're not, a sh they, they, they're not afraid, Steve. It's everywhere. What's the, look at this. July 25, well, 2019. We're talking wow. about two days Please ago. Please send me the link. Yes. Please. Uh... Send us the link. This is crazy. And when they are saying they have a dominion of the Messiah, this is the Christian Antichrist. Steve. Yes. That's and the, the Antichrist. And the thing is, is just like what Adam was saying, you know, they believe that, you know, that you, you, you worship the Jews. So that this way here, they can appoint anybody they want to be the Mashiach, the Messiah. They have the dominion of and the Messiah. And what their word says... Because they're going to tell you, we sit in Moses' seat, so whatever yeah. we say goes. And, right, and they say that we, that the Gentiles, are going to accept Jewish dominion. Now, I ask Jewish pastors, <clears throat> not Jewish, but Christian pastors here, and I'm asking all of you Christians who follow Zionist pastors, where in the New Testament, where in the prophet, where is it written that the Jewish people will have a dominion? The Gentiles are not included, right? Where are the separation of humanity to Jews and non-Jews? Totally a racist idea, supremacist idea. Why are you following this theology? This is insane. Yeah, I wanted to mention with with Maimonides, uh, you know, his bust is in the capital. This is who uh, Ben Shapiro uh, looks up to. And um, and this is where you know this is what who Habad it gets most of their stuff from right that that and the Lurian Kabbalah uh, so the the whole seven Noahide laws this comes from Maimonides yes. correct yes correct. that's correct well and they yeah. also follow uh, uh, Rashi uh, which the book the 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 Talmud book is called the Midrash Rashi though is not quite as extreme he's extreme but he things. actually they, they, this is what's funny. He actually says that all humanity should follow the Ten Commandments, but they didn't like his saying, so they took uh, uh, Rambam. They and, took Maimonides instead, right, you know, right. so they took his view and they made it a halakha, a Jewish well, law. Well, you know, here's what's funny. So. Rambam claims that he got the inspiration to write the Law of Kings mm -hmm. because he said uh, Samuel, the prophet, was given the Law of Kings and he had to be the one to give the Law of the Kings. Well, Samuel gave what the law of the kings was in his own writings, and he just basically said, the king's going to rule over you. Mm -hmm. And Law of kings, that reminds me of the king's Torah that was written by the, the West Bank extremist settler. Yes. And I heard that he, that was actually funded uh, uh, indirectly from the Kushners. Wow! Whoa. We didn't yeah. know that! Wow. Do you and that is so supremacist. I've covered that. You know, it's about like talking about what rights we'll have and nobody's going to have any land and the Moshiach is in control of everything, basically. The Sanhedrin in charge. It's funny, you know, Rick, I saw Rick Wiles in True News is calling the, the Christians that surround Trump. There's a new documentary on Netflix coming out about the Christians around Trump. Mm -hmm. I, I, I doubt they're going to say anything about the Zionist and Chabad connections at all. Of course but he calls it the Sanhedrin that surrounds Trump. Right. Exactly. Yeah, he's right. Yeah, he's, he's right. right. But anyway, back to King's Torah. I think it was written by wasn't it Shapira also? Isn't the name of not sure. no, maybe not. Um we we can look it up, but I have posted it on Facebook right, about months ago and I forgot the name of a rabbi because so many names of rabbis it's so hard to remember them all. But anyway, the uh, Gurwitz, Yossi Gurwitz, who is an Israeli he's an ex Orthodox Jew. Did you look him up, Adam? I told you to look him up. Yossi Gurwitz. Uh, I don't. I don't remember now. Okay, if you look him incredible, up, incredible guy. We, we you're going clips to love. Life. You're going to love his uh, video called "When Israel Becomes Mighty." That's the name of. I saw. Book. I've seen that. I've seen oh, that guy. Seen yeah. It? Okay. Well, okay. he's talking yeah. about that book as a bestseller in Israel. He says it's it, it basically they they have it in every Israeli school, okay? They teach in public schools from this book. And that particular book endorses killing of Gentile babies because in the future they might become terrorists. Well, you know, here's the... It's, it's, okay, now let's get into something there. Right. Two things. The Chinese 
already are using DNA to determine whether or not the person has the potential to be a criminal. Mm -hmm. oh, All right, wow. this is yes. technology they got from Israel. Yes, exactly. All right, I'm going to tell you <laughs> something. I'm going to tell you something that's not made public. Mm. Israel is also doing the same technology. I know this from those in the intelligence community in Israel. Israel also is heavily involved in the DNA technology and they're able to determine certain traits in the individual and Israel is looking at possibly doing the same thing that China is doing and that is sending people to rehabilitation training based on DNA based on their DNA possibilities of what their signature DNA could be all right now that's not being brought out nowhere all right now on top of that on top of that on one of the contacts that I have, and I've got multiple contacts that come out of Israel there, they made a slip up in one of their messages to me there. And they said to me, they said, Steve, right now, the Israelis are working with the angels. And not all of them are bad. That was the slip up right there. Not all of them are bad. Some of them are sorry for what they did. That's the fallen Nephilim he's talking about. And he's, because he'd already told me, he said, these guys have 1,000 plus IQs. And he told me, he says, we're in over our heads. And he names the names. He names that we're talking about tech giants in the DNA research in Israel. And, he's, and, the, and, this, and the guy that I'm working with sits down and has dinner with these guys. So, but they basically. All right. what, what he was, said they're in over their head. He said they're working with these angels, and he said not all of them are bad. He's talking about nephilim. He's talking, or not nephilim, but nephilim. Nephilim and nephilim are two different ones. Nephilim are the angels themselves that fell, and you have to remember if you read the book of Enoch, Enoch says they would be involved in our governmental systems all the way to the consummation which is to the very end mm -hmm. right. this is we know this and he told me though he said he said Steve he said the guy tells me we're in over our heads they are looking get this Adam they are looking for individuals right now this is why this DNA has been going global with people they're trying to get people's DNA he said we're looking for certain people with a certain genetic marker because they have the ability and the aptitude to do what these beings want them to be able to do. Yeah. I think well, they're looking that's for, a lot to take in. <laughs> you're, you're, saying, you're saying Israeli intelligence is talking to fallen angels that have thousand IQs mm. and and what was the last part? Exactly. And of course we're talking about they're, they are doing DNA testing Adam and looking And they're for looking for cert certain people with looking certain for, and they're doing experiments with those people. He would, they asked, one guy that I work with, they asked him to do the DNA test because they thought he might have that possibility. He said he was too afraid to do it. He said because they're doing experiments on these people to see if they have that aptitude. And he said, Steve, he said, this is all experimental. He said, and it can go bad on you as well. And that's when he told me, he said, they admit they're in over their heads. The people that are in the high-tech companies that are working with this are in over their heads. Now, that's the same thing I was told from Washington, D.C. when I was working with my uh, source there when we were talking about Iran and Iran having this technology that China has been sharing with them. And he said, Steve, we're in over our heads. And he said, the big danger for America is going to be our East Coast. But they got the sleeper cells, and I got another source. I have to throw this one on you too, Adam. Uh, you know, this is for your own information here. So everybody, you're listening anyway. But I'm giving this to Adam for for his purposes there. I can't say where this source comes from, but this source here is from the Middle East, and it's not in Israel. But I was talking with John more recently about sleeper cells. John was asking me, "Can you confirm there are Iranian sleeper cells in America?" And I said, yes, but they're not what you think. It's not the Iranian people that are working for the Iranian government right now. It's the Iranian Mujahideen who are backed by John Bolton, Pompeo, and the entire Trump administration. They are the sleeper cells in America, and they're preparing to do like what they called the Al-Qaeda attack, which was really more done by Israel than it was Al-Qaeda. 
but they're preparing to do attacks on this nation, blame it on Iran, but it would be the Muyadin that are doing it. Well, I had no idea that the source that I have from that part of the world was listening to that broadcast, but he sent me a private message and he said, Steve, you were spot on. He said, that is who the sleeper cells are. It's not the regular Iranian people. These are those extremists that are working with the U.S. government and they will do those acts against this nation. Hmm. To drive America into a war. Different subject altogether. I should but anyway, uh, are you familiar with Barry Chamish a little bit? Uh, he used to be a personal friend uh, of ours, but he was a, j a journalist. Israeli uh, journalist. He's Israeli. the one who wrote the book, Who, 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 uh, who Killed Yitzhak Rabin. Right. He died about two years ago. Uh, we believe he was killed, but um, he had to live in the United States because he was under danger in, in Israel, because he was exposing too much truth. And he wrote the book about giants in Israel oh. or fallen angels. In Israel, he has a whole book on this, where he's proving accounts of Israeli government officials talking to these entities in Israel. So that's very interesting. And just recently, we got a package from someone and they sent me this book. So I'm looking forward to actually read it and we can maybe talk about this next time, Steve, right. after I read it, what's in it. So we got, Yeah, we got more. We got right. more than just a package, boy. <laughs> talk. Well, well, on the DNA uh, collection, uh, it, I've heard that they collect it all at birth. Also, um, you know, there's all the genealogy with 23andMe and Ancestry and stuff. And it's just such crazy times we're moving into with, like, the CRISPR gene editing and nanotechnology that the whole uh, artificial intelligence and, and like, the neuro, Neuralink thing that Elon Musk just announced or did his presentation on. And like DARPA super soldier programs and stuff. Wow. So there's uh, we're we're living in a dystopian uh, sci-fi world right now. It seems yeah. like. Right. Okay. Uh, anything else from these last three videos or last four maybe? I'll that tell you some seems... better stuff later when it's just the two of us. <laughs> no, you're teasing the people. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I forget everybody else is watching. <laughs> yeah. So, so well, back on the, the Maimonides and uh, why Trump and so many Christian Zionists are totally like in bed with the ultra-Orthodox. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to show this real quick just so people, if they hadn't seen it before, okay. that Trump is completely... It funding funding these groups right. and completely associated. It's not just senators dancing out in front. And and why would they be helping them so much when they're all about the Moshiach and they're supposed to be about Jesus? Right, exactly. So Trump's son-in-law, yes, yes. Thousands to Chabad. That's right. They're both Trump and Kushner are supporting Chabad. Yeah. You Not know, to mention let, Ivanka. Let me is, tell you though why this is going converted. on. And yeah. and you know, sadly enough, Adam, what's what's happening, what's so sad, is that Christians don't realize how dangerous this organization can be. Uh, uh, and it's not to say, and I have to tell you as well, there's a lot of good people in, in the Chabad organization as well that have no clue what's going on. It's, it's, like, it's like Masons, you know what I'm saying? When you're at that 32nd degree and higher level in the Masons, now you're into that in-depth, indoctrinated cult part of the, of the Masonry, right? That's the same thing it is with the Chabad organization. There's a lot of Jews that go there that they're just, they seem to be everyday normal people. Well, you know? they so. have no idea because the rabbis are fooling not only the nations and Christians, but they they're fool fooling their own. their own people who think they're just serving the, the God of Israel, yeah. that they are doing uh, Bible laws, and you know. Well, when you mention, mentioned Freemasonry, I, I instantly thought of this, and he's got his hand in his pocket yes. like the Freemason sign, right? Yeah. yeah, because Freemasonry is a Gentile side of the Noah. They were taken over side. by the Jews in the 1700s, and the 21st degree Freemason is the guy that's going to behead. He is the judge and executioner. And the 21st degree Freemason, their symbol, their emblem, is the guy in fully black garb with a black hood over his head and the sword above his head and you probably know that better than anybody Adam about that there but 
That's what I discovered recently. They are, and they're called the Noachide. Right. Exactly. They're the Noachide. Who's called the Noachide? The, the free, Freemasons are called the Noahide? No, oh, yeah, in there. only the, the 21 degree. Yeah. 21st degree Freemason is a Noahide. I, I, gosh, I've got the thing right here. Glory to oh, God. Oh, wow. That is news. I knew that all, a lot of the initiations um, had like Kabbalah linked names or like uh, Judaism linked names. Let me let me give you the BAM one here, right? Here we here's one of your BAM ones. Whoop whoop! Sorry about that. And, and there's there's a um, Masonic symbolism all over the place. Also, you know, mentioning the the NSA, there was the Total Information Awareness, which is the Illuminati pyramid, like that's beaming down on the whole world. That was the emblem. Right. Yeah. Here's your good example right here. James Anderson, man and Mason. All right. James Anderson, he was the guy that he was one of the ones that slipped in on the uh, uh, into the into the Mason group. Because see, Masons originally were were, and I'm not trying to justify Freemasonry, okay? But the the original people in Freemasonry were Christians, but they still were for for Jewish people. But it says here, the unacceptable implication that the past Christian Mason had in non-Christian countries have uh, been bound to conform to other religions. The charge is therefore reworded to state that ancient Christian Masons were changed to comply with the Christian usage, usages of countries in which they traveled or worked. But as a Mason was now found in all, in all countries, even of diverse religions, they were now only obliged to the religion of which all men agree. Thus, Christianity now gains a specific mention in the charge, but is only awarded a special place in Masonry in the distant past. A more significant change concerns the moral law. In 1723, there had been uh, no attempt to define it, and while this aided inclusiveness, it left uh, unanswered the awkward question of where it could be found. By 1738, Anderson had found a useful new formula. A Mason was obliged to obey moral law as a true Noahide, and the preceding history of the Noahide had also been mentioned with a note that, that, that was the first name of Masons according to some old traditions which had no doubt just been invented. So they're an original... Like, All right, Noah but now I did, a, I did an entire video on this and uh, I think it's on my Patreon. I'll send you a link to that, Adam. And uh, and and I was just a, a friend of ours sent me some sent me actually this book here called Noah and the Noahites of the Prehistoric Masonry. And this is where I use this as my foundation, and I really began to dig on this. And this is when I found out just how much it was embedded in Freemasonry. But when you're a 21st degree Freemason, they clearly tell you they are the judges and the executioners of the Noahide laws. They are called the Noahides, and their emblem that is for, you know, because every level has a different type of emblem, is fully dressed in the black garb. And, uh, and of course, when they're dressed in that black garb, uh, they have the, the sword over their head showing that they're coming down for the execution. And it's an executioner garb. They don't say that, but that's, that's what they, they, they show you the picture of it. Right, that's their emblem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amazing. Mm -hmm. That's that's amazing. And, and uh, Freemasonry is all about like Solomon's Temple and rebuilding the temple yes. and stuff. So which yeah, it's... Albert Albert Pike's book clearly right. shows that they are the, they are dedicated to rebuild the uh, third temple for the Pope of Rome. So when but the Pope of Rome has to be Jewish though if they're going to do it that way. Right. And uh, we know that the recent Pope of Rome. He is Jewish. He is actually... He, he is, was put in power by the Jews. He right. was going and sending his bishops and cardinals to Israel. Before he was elected to be the pontiff, he was sending them to train under uh, that guy there. What's his name? The one no, that does the, the, the Noahide name. laws wow. uh, in Jerusalem. I forgot his name, but anyway, uh, his bishops and cardinals were all traveling to Jerusalem to be trained on the Noahide laws. And this is why right. Pope, they, they needed him and they needed Pope Francis in, uh, George Bergoglio, because they needed one, he's a Jesuit, and you can't be a Jesuit unless you have Jewish lineage. Right. And he had already been in bed with the Jews preparing to be a Noahide and to also transform the Catholic Church into following the, the Noahide laws and going into submission to Israel. Which we know that in a 2007, they have signed with the Jewish organization, they signed a paper 
to agree with Noahide laws. Right. I'm just getting warmed up. So here we go. We, we know that Vatican already agrees, United Nations agrees, it is in American public law. It's just, uh, you know, to, de to anybody who is trying to deny this is very un either uninformed or they're on purpose um, mis misleading others. I got a question yeah. for you, Adam. Yeah. I don't know enough about this yet, but it, it is a speculation of mine, and maybe you know, and you could help me to understand this better. But it seems like to me that the that the Talmudists are using the gay community and specifically the rainbow and the laws, in especially in America, to be able to slip in the anti-Semitism laws underneath the laws that are uh, to protect the gay people. Is this true? That is a theory that I was seeing some dots connecting, and, and it was when I talked to uh, Reverend Ted Pike because he, I saw him say that back decades ago when he was uh, researching the, the beginning of the LGBTQ uh, movement, that it was a lot of you know, people, of uh, non-Gentiles, that were behind it. And then the, their emblem, I, I've heard other origin stories of the rainbow, so maybe it's not connected to the Noahides, but definitely they, they're trying to pass these anti-hate speech laws, and they will do it under the guise of protecting, you know, other minorities right. or, uh, you know, your sexual proclivities. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, actually I read an article recently, it was about... It was about uh, Mel Gibson's new Rothschild movie. There was a rabbi really mad about it, and he talked about how they were going to have to shut stuff like that down. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was my point. Not that they, had, not that it created the rainbow part, but the reason why I was looking at this is because in the book of Revelation, when it describes the two witnesses being killed, it says they're killed in the great city where our Lord was crucified, but it calls it Sodom and Egypt. You know, and I'm not here to bash gay people, but the point that I'm trying to make here is the fact that the Jewish anti-Semitism, ACLU, whatever organizations that they're using to push these laws are using the gay community to get their laws passed because they know that the gay community has more power in getting the laws passed than what they do on their own. Yeah. Yes. Right, yeah, well, that's what he was doing. He was using other people as a cover to usher in, you know, and sneak in them along with it to, the, to make anti-Semitism illegal. I also want to say, if any, uh, you know, gay people watch this show, that uh, there is a huge trickery involved here, just in, as in everything when it comes to Talmudic laws. They are tricking Gentiles into Noahide laws, into Talmudic laws. It's all trick and deception because in the book of uh, the Divine Code book, which uh, spells out all the sub laws for the, the yes, Noahide for the Noah laws, right. uh, homosexuality is a sin punishable by death, by decapitation as well. So they're only so, using you for the time being. Well, uh, this is just my conjecture, just by studying Noahide laws and sub laws and Jewish mindset and Judaism. Uh, I would be careful if I was homosexual, you know, yeah. with being vocal about it or coming out of closet very easily uh, because I have this feeling they just want to, you know, for them all to come out because in the future they will actually kill them. I, I would be let, 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 me, uh, let me blow your guys' mind and share screen again here real quick. So this is uh, Dr. Bronner's soap. It's a natural soap company. It's a, it's a Zionist company. They say it on their website that they're a Zionist company. This was a post they did, all one activist. Oh, and that's the other thing. Uh, their, their bottles are just a bunch of religious stuff, and it's all about we are all one. So it's the Noahide one world religion that he was always pushing. And they did an interview with this woman who was like an LGBT activist. Okay. And you do control F Talmud, and you see here, Another huge part of my gender journey has been digging into my own ancestry and learning what my ancestral background teaches about gender. As a Jewish person, I have studied the six genders found in the Talmud, and I am excited to know that there is historical evidence in my own background of humans living outside the binary. 
Wow, amazing. Yes. Uh, tell Maybe they're going about, to accept them. Do you yeah. know what the six genders are? Because I never really got to studying that in great detail. But isn't that funny how Christians are bridging with Judaism, knowing Talmud is their book, and they're talking about six genders now. How godly is that? <laughs> we have two genders in the book of Genesis, male and female, right? Male yeah. and female, he created them. Talmud talks about six genders. What are the six genders? I don't know, but I'm not that surprised that it's a six or, or a seven, you know? Yeah, that's right. They're all six wow. makes sense, just like everything. And, the, and the, look at the rainbow, too. Oh, six, 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 I'm six. sorry. <laughs> I, I stopped sharing, but here, look at the rainbow, too. Yeah, I, that, that's like I, and I their logo it symbolism. With, right, with the screen itself, you can see that it is in the yeah. colors of the rainbow oh, as well. Oh, and right here, too, the soap right, bottles in the right. corner. I saw that as well. You right know, uh, Adam, in the book of uh, Kabbalah for the nations, did you read about the fact that they're saying that uh, the, it's only uh, Gentiles, non-Jews, who can see seven colors in a rainbow because Jews see only three? Uh, that sounds like the Kabbalah Safara stuff. Yeah, but that's... Same with our souls are on the animalistic levels while right. theirs is on like the higher plane. Right, that they are explaining it on the seven colors of the rainbow because Gentiles are lesser humans and they can see seven colors while it's really, in reality, it's only three, but only the Jews can see the three. You know, right, it, so. it, and it came from. They said that Newton was the one that discovered there were seven colors in the, in the, the color spectrum, mm -hmm. and he was, uh, I believe, a Freemason or a Kabbalist, right. one or the other, make yeah. both. So, do, do you consider this book uh, as a um, totally supremacist, uh, racist, most hateful? It should be banned for for hatred, for uh, racism. It, it's so racist and supremacist and lacks self-awareness that it's almost funny to me that a rabbi would make this for Gentiles, for Christians, thinking that it's going to convert them to be Noahides, but right. they are able to convert people. There's articles, Noahides 2.0, and they have all these, you know, um, places all over the world, Philippines, Brazil, where there's Chabad rabbis that are running these, like, camps, I guess, or communities, you could call them, of Noahides. Right, and right. Christian pastors inviting Jewish rabbis to speak to Christian audience. Th think, and, about, and, think about what you guys are saying, though. Yeah. As we listen to uh, Adam say the things that he's saying here, mm -hmm. the first thing that comes to my mind, Jesus says to these reptilians, I just have to call it what they are, reptilians. You know, he says to these serpents, he calls them the vipers. He said, you will cross land and sea to make one, one convert. convert. Yes. And when you do make him a convert, you make him twofold more child of hell than yourselves. That's right. That's right. So I mean, these, that's what you're describing yeah. when you say this, Adam. You're talking about this country, that country, and they're setting up this this. And they are, you know, they also station. say that in Judaism they are prohibited to proselyte, that they don't want to really make converts mm. to Judaism, but yet they are proselyting and making converts to Noahidism, mm -hmm. which is a form of its Judaism. It's kind of like sub-Judaism, you know. But they're saying that, oh, you know, we, we in Judaism, we don't proselyte, we don't want converts, we don't really want Gentiles to become Jews. Now, of course, there is a process, you can, as a Gentile, to become Jewish and go through, become, you know, uh, go into Judaism. But once you are a Gentile, and they still, they still don't, you're still not on a, such a high level as they consider a real Jews to be. So the the worst Jew is still better than the most righteous goy is the way I've seen it explained. That's right. Anyway, it's so anti. <laughs> anti these anti things are true. I mean, listen. But I, I've, so I've said too many times with Orthodox Jews, and yeah. and, and and this is you know, and I never liked it because as a as a Christian, I never looked at that way as far as the goyim or the Gentiles, but. And which is really kind of ironic, because Abraham is going to be a father of many nations, but in Hebrew it says a father of many goim. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, well, so it's not many nations, mm. but he, goim. Yeah, but uh, interesting. Uh, Abraham himself was a Gentile. He was not Jewish. 
So this is all. We, you know, we only get the Jewish thing from. It's from all the trickery, of Adam. It's, it's, it's such a deception and trickery that Christians mm -hmm. really need to wake up to what is going on, and they need to understand their own, uh, their own faith, that the true gospel, and they need to revisit the New Testament scriptures and learn about the true gospel, so they can see the difference. Uh, that the, the Jewish kingdom that they're building right now is not the same kingdom of heaven that Jesus talked about and apostles talked Before about. Before they take your Bibles away. Right, exactly. And, uh, and, and give you a new one. Because I believe that the only way to, <laughs> to be victorious over this, Adam, do you think? N not the Bible they're going to put out. The one that they already have out that's the yeah. bestseller on Amazon that we covered uh, in our video last week that's uh, doing well on my channel. I did right. with the honor. Yeah. See that? Oh, oh speaking let of that, let, let me go ahead and show you this too, Adam. This is the bestseller Bible right now out of Israel 365. It's a it's a Bible without Jesus, okay? And in this, this Bible is, on their website is Mark Bilt's Christian Pastor. And a lot of Christian evangelicals are cooperating with Rabbi Weiss, who, who has uh, started this Israel 365. Okay, and they even went to Knesset. They went to Knesset with Christian pastors and they had prayer together in a Knesset. And this is the Bible that they are talking about. Now, in this Bible here, let, on let me, page 908, they're promoting Noahide laws. All right, I, I need to, I want to help you guys understand something. I have what Yana's got here up on the screen, Adam, right now. Uh, this is the Bible that they're using. Now, th this, this, as far as a Bible Bible, yes, it's the Old Testament. You've got the Hebrew Scriptures here, the English translation over here, right? But, all right, now I want to show you guys something that I have right here, all right? As a Jew, I have a, a, a regular um, uh, Tanakh, okay? And I have the Hamash, which is put out by, of course, the, the uh, Chabad organization. Now... To show you what we have inside of the Bibles that Jews read, okay, I want to give you guys so you can see. This is what our Bible would look like if you're a Jewish guy, right? The top up there is the Hebrew Scriptures. With the, I got one with English on there. The bottom is a commentary from the Talmud, okay? So Christians are going, I mean, for a Jewish person, before you know, b being a Christian, this is normal for, for, for uh, Jewish people, right? And I still have it. It's getting old, but I still got it. This is exactly what they're making their bestseller. You basically have a Chabad book, a little bit more watered down, because in the one that I have, I've got a lot more Talmudic uh, commentary there. But this is what they're doing. This is Rambam's own section right here out of this and of course what are they talking about here is from the San Adrian 56a these are the seven laws seven Noahide laws ensure that society functions with uh, basic, basic level of morality and religious values Memonides writes uh, that uh, anyone who keeps these laws properly is considered righteous among the nations and earns share in the world to come these seven universal commandments are and they put number one, uh, establish those courts of justice, because we're going to take care of some of you guys. Uh, do not curse God. Do not engage in idol worship. In other words, don't believe Jesus Christ is divine or worship him or, or anything like that, because you'll get your head cut off. Uh, do not engage in acts of sexual immorality, such as adultery and incest. They didn't put that one in there about the gay people, but don't worry. I mean, who knows? Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not eat a limb off a live animal. All right, so, all right, you guys pick it up. I need to see that real quick. I'm going to pull it. But anyway, yeah. Sanhedrin 56A, it says it. That's where it's from, but they, yes. these Christians keep saying that it's in the Bible. No, it's it's not in the Bible. It's the definitely Talmudic laws. And, Adam, can you put out uh, this link of kohennoahide.com again so people see the decapitation listed on on actual um, website? Yeah. Okay. Yep, I can show it. You know, I know we have shown this before many times, but 
it's a power of um, repetition repetition people need to right, realize right. what's happening this is not a taboo anymore this is they're openly this is only Torah though. showing this to you that they're going to kill you by decapitation here we go this so, is yeah. so noahide.org noahide.org no, no, it's noahide.com isn't it no it's org it's org okay and then this, you go to the Denim Sublaws, number seven, Courts of Justice, and go down to 16. Oops, there it is. The courts is to administer the death penalty by the sword, decapitation. Right, and they call, call it a positive mitzvah? Yeah, yeah positive, positive mitzvah, mitzvah, which means a positive law. Positive law. The sin shall surely be avenged. And out of Exodus 21, 20, that's what they cite in actual Old Testament. It doesn't say anything about decapitation, but this is a rabbinic, rabbinic... Uh, well, the, the, rabbinic according, to, according to Jewish uh, uh, teaching, they believe that the rabbi has, on earth, has more authority than what Moses has, or even what God, God himself has. said. Yeah, has. They, they actually teach in yeah, the Talmud. Christians that don't know that, Right. God has no authority on earth according to rabbinic Judaism. Right. None. In the rabbi the, has the rabbi, authority. The rabbi says that they're masters over creation and that God put them to like create and manifest all other life. Right. And they are right. teaching Including that the law. God himself has to submit himself to the rabbis on earth. So that's Talmud. And well, well, they're saying that they're not being patient and letting God, you know, send Moshiach whenever he's ready. They're saying, we want Moshiach now. We don't want to wait. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's, that's how they do it. We want him now. We want him now, you know. Right. But that's not the true Messiah that we Christians, it's not, nothing about this is about Jesus Christ. And that's why, why Adam, we have to wake up the Christians because... I believe that part of their success, or a huge part of their success, is uh, Christian support. If that was gone, I believe we could win this war. You know. Absolutely, I agree. And you know, we've been we've been talking about this too. That they wanted to bring this back. Trump uh, invoked the death penalty when talking about the Pittsburgh synagogue shooting and, and linked it to anti-Semitism and people's subconscious mind. And now they're they're bringing it back, and they're also trying to simultaneously trying to make anti-Semitism illegal, which is, you know, goes along both of these going along with the Noahide agenda, uh, apparently. Okay, well, this is very important what you're just showing. It's published two days ago. Federal government to resume capital punishment. Now, Stephen, do you have this link? Can you still uh, put up this link about? Uh, this um, lawyer organization, Jewish org okay, here. I don't know, Adam, do you see this? Uh, do you see this? Wow. Okay. Now, that was 1999, I believe. Okay, U.S. Jewish law groups push no high loan decapitation. 2017. Is, oh, that's the date of the article, September, excuse me, April 13, 2017. Go ahead. Okay, at the Supreme Court, but this is, go down, let's read about this, okay. Ever since the Jewish Talmudic Noahide laws were introduced into American legal system via public law 10214, some members of the Jewish legal community have been using deceptive practices and outright lies to introduce Jewish Talmudic laws into the Supreme Court, particularly in the area of capital punishment and execution law. Execution is a legal issue of importance to those seeking Im to implement Noahide law in the United States, since Noahide law calls for decapitation of anyone who practices idolatry, which includes Christianity or blasphemes the Jewish God. Here we will briefly discuss which organizations are infiltrating the Supreme Court, preparing it for the acceptance of Talmudic law, and how they are deceiving the public into accepting Talmudic execution laws, particularly decapitation, in the United States. Now there is a picture of these two lawyers. Now this is Nathan and Aliza Lewin, Noahide law advocates, who submitted the Bryan versus Moore brief. That's something we need to get familiar with.
because now what you showed Adam this news from two days ago that he's bringing back the uh, actual um, execution mm -hmm. this is about what they started in 1990s okay they their petition they petitioned Supreme Court to exchange execution by electrocution with decapitation and they were <laughs> And they, they, were they trying to like justify that it's more humane or right, something? Right, they're justify. They were justifying. Oh, it's more humane. It's not disfiguring, mm -hmm. and it's better way to die, you know. And, um, I, I've also heard in the and I've seen in the comments that at some point the government bought a bunch of guillotines, but I haven't confirmed that, and I'm not sure if it's true. Yeah. Do you guys know about that? Yes, it, it is true. Do. It is true, and we have a source whose son is in the military and the second sort of well, was I, I can take you all the way to the capital with second that. second uh, source was Pamela Schufert I believe she's a independent journalist and she was talking to military personnel herself where they said that yes and then I had another source I forgot Steve the source on my yeah. Facebook another ex-military who wrote to me that yes um, yeah. They, they are putting them in the state of Virginia, I believe, and state of Georgia, definitely confirmed, confirmed. But here we go. Uh, this is what we, we will leave a link for people. This actual site is stopnoahidelaw.blogspot.com. This is uh, research done, very thorough, very good research, uh, this particular uh, website. Go up, Steve, so I can show who, who is the source. It is uh, Vincent Bruno, he's a Hindu and activist, however, even though he's a Hindu, his research on Noahide laws is absolutely perfect. He, I really highly recommend that you look through absolutely everything on that website, tremendous amount of information with proofs. But this is what worries me about this. Uh, and we do have our website coming How, how sneakingly they are putting in these Talmudic laws in yeah. our Supreme Court and these are the people, and uh, go up so I can uh, name the organizations, Jewish organizations, uh, is COLPA, C-O-L-P-A, National Jewish Commission on Law and Public Affairs. Another one is the International Association of Jewish Lawyers and Jurists. You also have the Chabad okay. Labovich. Well, yes. Oh, the uh, law. Okay, never mind, I'm sorry. International Institute for Judaic Law. I mean, Adam, they are just forming all kinds of organizations. I have never seen uh, in Christians forming some kind of a lobby or so many organizations to protect Christians and to protect, uh, you know, New Testament. But Jews have so many organizations protecting their Talmudic laws and lobbying and pushing it to the government organizations in our law system. Right. It's unbelievable. And they have no opposition. There is no opposition. They, they sure do have a lot. And, you know, it's funny. It's a story that you guys, uh, that I got from you and we covered, Yana, in our, in our talk the other day, is, is Israel 365 media, how they're able to get the propaganda out so much. And just, so, you know, we covered this. And just to show people that Israeli 65 media in that network is The Blaze. Yes. Here, The right. Blaze Network mm -hmm. with, with Glenn Beck and Steven Crowder, Louder with Crowder. I don't know if he saw it from us, but a big YouTuber saw this. He, was, he has a feud with uh, a guy that's on The Blaze Network, and he was really parading this around that you're, you know, you're in an Israel network. <laughs> yes, and then breaking Christian news. I mean, you see, Adam, they're controlling Christian see, prophecy. Bible. What, when we get it, when right. We get it. Breaking Israel news as well. You're right. Yeah, and this particular Bible. So here's the Bible. That without Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> and look who's on the back. Israel 365. Yes. Wow. Uh, yeah, same one. Yeah. Oh, and check this out, too. Uh, a roots Sheva, that's the another mm -hmm. it, what did it say? Israel National News. That's almost your guys' uh, name a little bit. But you check this out. This is the same website and they say the Benai Noah, the struggle to observe the goal is to unify, serve, and organize all but uh, Noahide communities of the world under a single body that can operate 
under the direct authority and supervision of the Sanhedrin. That's why they want us to set up these courts. Yep, that's yeah. right. And they want to Train. move. They want, yeah, they, I got this one from you guys too, this, yeah. this article. But they want to move, uh, they want to move the United Nations to to Jerusalem and actually create this international court whose head is Sanhedrin. And that's part of this Jewish kingdom. Now, Yitzhak Shapira has a video where he's telling people that uh, the gospel is a Jewish gospel and the kingdom is a Jewish kingdom. You know, and he's fooling so many Christians into this however understand that gospel is not the jewish gospel gospel is the gospel of jesus christ and the kingdom is not jewish kingdom but it's the kingdom of heaven that he spoke about uh, and it's totally two different things and it's so easy for people who are not who who kind of abandon the true gospel and who are not paying attention to be completely deceived by by this propaganda, you know. That's right. So we need to return to the true gospel, and we need to be we need to preach basic gospel to people. Yes. So they understand the difference between Jewish kingdom that they are building, okay, with Sanhedrin reestablished, and the kingdom of heaven that Christ spoke. That kingdom of heaven is within you. It's he lives in your heart. It's it's in you. Christ in you was the revelation that Paul, Apostle Paul received. It's not a Jewish dominion or Jewish kingdom in Jerusalem with the Sanhedrin as a ruling body. So this is what we got to get across to Christians, Adam, because, you know, as I told you a little while ago, if Christians didn't support this, we could win this. That's right. But the problem mm. is majority of Christians are supporting this agenda knowingly or unknowingly and they are bringing antichrist and self-destruction basically yeah. because they will be asked to deny christ and when they do when they if they don't they will be killed and if they do then they will lose their soul so this is basically what um, our message is to christians to wake up of what's going on right now yeah. Yeah, and you know, I mentioned the the documentary that's coming out on Netflix about the the secretive Christian organization that's influencing Trump. So that that comes out in a couple days. It'll be interesting to see what they what they get into and cover there. Um, can, can I can I show you guys a quick story I had real quick also? Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. So the new and, and to to dismiss and say that oh this is this sounds crazy they're never going to have a world Noahide movement. Well, they're trying to set all the leaders up into place. There was Bolsonaro who went you know to the wall and and does all the stuff in Israel with Netanyahu, and then now Boris Johnson, the new prime minister of England, he volunteered in a Galilee kibbutz in the 1980s. The boots leader says, mm -hmm. and the Jewish Telegraph says most pro-Israel cabinet ever with Boris Johnson's new lineup, all have a positive view on the Jewish state. It's crazy how he's got the blonde hair, too, just like Trump, like a Gentile that goes and does, you know, the mandatory stuff that you apparently have to do to be a world leader. Breaking Israel News is covering him. Johnson will withdraw the UK from Iran nuclear deal, just like Trump did immediately upon entering office. Breaking Israel news again, new UK Prime Minister descended from rabbi and feels Jewish. There we go. Now here's something really <laughs> there we strange. Go. Here's something really oh, strange. Wow. He's now the Prime Minister of Great Britain. If you remember, you and I, we were in Bratislava mm -hmm. covering the foreign minister's secret meeting there that was That's going Slovakia. on. Yeah. We, you filmed Boris Johnson coming out of the meeting there, and what were they talking about? They were building a new, a one world military. One world army. One yes. world army. And just just Johnson, like Ben Gurion wanted, no standing army. Yes. Wow. Oops, wow. I lost it. But he calls himself a passionate Zionist. So we got another passionate Zionist leader in in the world. 
to oh. go along with the Zionist uh, New World Order. This is amazing. I mean, how in every state, every government, they're accomplishing their goals. I mean, this is amazing. They're putting in power all the leaders they need, right down to the Vatican. They All the leaders are pro-Zionist. Right, exactly. It has slipped right under our noses. I mean, there have been some faithful people out there, like Ted Pike and others, that have been trying yeah. to sound this alarm for years. Our cells just woke up a few years ago, but... You Otherwise, know, we'd have been right along with it, probably cheering it along, you, unfortunately. Right. So, we know if you are still in Zionism, we understand where you are. We were there too. But this is the time to wake up to what's going yeah. on. You're not this is the it, time yeah. to return to milk first, to your first love, to Christ and His gospel. And again, it's not a Jewish gospel. It's gospel of Christ, and it's not Jewish kingdom. It's kingdom of heaven, Christ's kingdom. Okay, so that's what we need to preach, Stephen. As I said, basic gospel, that's what we're going to do. And we will keep exposing this propaganda, this agenda that they have for Jewish dominion, right. where mm -hmm. humanity is separated to Jews and non-Jews, or to those who dominate and the slaves. Yes. As Yossi Gurvitz said, in a Jewish law, in Halakha, slavery was never uh, abolished. They right. believe in slavery, and slaves are the willing Gentiles. Okay, this is why and, and the, and the Boris, Gentiles are already doing it. They're a, picking the grapes for free. In yeah, Israel Boris every Johnson year. was in kibbutz. What do you think that is? Okay, this <laughs> is a volunteer work for the for the Jews, which is slavery. Okay, so here mm -hmm. we go. Adam, anything yep. else? Because I think we are getting to time where we yeah. Are. yeah. Real quick, real yeah. quick, I had one, one, a couple other things up that we were talking about, mm -hmm. and that is um, the, the the Orthodox woman that's head of the NSA. Now, this was an old uh, emblem, official government emblem for Information Awareness Office, the all-seeing eye, uh, uh, wow. Freemasonic symbolism, watching over the whole world, and then. And then there's the the masonry stuff that's over in Israel with the two the two pillars like the twin towers, Temple of Solomon, the All Seeing Eye, the Israeli Supreme yes. Court, designed and yes. funded by the Rothschilds. Mm -hmm. That's right. Can, and then Adam, can oops, you go back to that first one that you showed? The total information awareness. Yeah. Now, if you think about it. People may not realize this, but from the side of the earth that they have the eye on would be the United States. Because it is. we're looking at the back side. So they got their eye on America. <laughs> the whole world they already conquered. Now yeah, but, it's just yeah, they're looking, little they're, freedoms we have left. They're going to conquer those. And right. Yeah. Well, this is very sad. And if we don't wake up Christians... <clears throat> I, I, I just cannot even imagine the future awaiting us. He, you know, I know that in Christ we will do, we will even die for Christ if we need to, and our future is in Him. However, this is very important on which side you stand right now because what did Jesus say? Because they will tell Him, didn't we prophesy in your name? Because all of these evangelicals standing with these Jude Judaics or Judaism and these rabbis, they speak the name of Jesus to their congregations. And they will say, didn't we prophesy in your name, Jesus? Didn't we do this for you, Jesus? But what did He tell them? I never no, knew no. you. Right. Okay? So we have to be very careful on which side we are right now. This is the time to awaken, to wake up. Let me just anyway. say as well, too, before we say goodbye to Adam, guys, don't forget, and I haven't said it in a long time, and if I don't say it now, I'll forget to say it tonight. August 17th, here in Orlando, go to our website, israelinewslive.org. We will be doing a little one-day conference here. I'm not going to get into the issues of what we're going to talk about, for the simple reason is, it's probably better left unsaid. But uh, you can go to our website, click on it, you'll see the conference for August 17th, 2019, here in Orlando. You need to make a comment that you're coming with whoever you're coming with. There's no charge for the conference, but we are limited on seating. And so we need to know who's coming so that we don't end up having people come in and they can't make it in. So if you're not on that list there in the comments, we, you won't be able to get in because we'll be limited on how many people can be there. Okay. Adam, any last words for tonight? 
Um, no last words. It was a pleasure to be here and chat with you guys. Um, I hope to do another show again in the future. And this is extremely important information. Everybody needs to share it. Uh, check out nomorenews.org is a great resource for a lot of this info, the featured videos that I've covered in depth. And uh, share this with all the Christians that you know. Anybody that's a Christian Zionist, you have to be in their ear about this stuff. Yes. yes. Tell us uh, your other sources. Where else are you except... No more news YouTube. We know that. No more no news more YouTube. News no, more news, yeah. well, no more news. No more news. Bitch. Right. right. Yeah. All, yeah. All the links are on nomorenews.org. And it's K-N-O-W. Like knowledge. No more news. Right. Okay. Well, you're doing great job, Support Adam. Support the work Adam does. Yes. Uh, we greatly appreciate Adam and uh, and, yes. and, and value his friendship as well, as well. And uh, and just really, really an excellent source for the information and, and, and other things besides uh, Noahide laws. And I he's tirelessly working. This is a very difficult work to look at every source every day and to see what's you know what's coming out on all this to keep you in the know and also keep in mind that people like Adam, us and few others are risking our lives, you know, and our comforts. Yes. You know, it's not easy to be talking about this and being a front line. So and keep you this get in your mind. channel because yes. it's on risk to be I mean Adam you lost they took down forcibly some of the videos you did on this subject. They Is did that us as well and they yeah, well, on the big censorship purge that happened recently, Vox had Apocalypse. They took down three videos that had that were about Chabad, Noahide laws, and Moshiach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay, Adam. That's well, it. thank you for coming tonight. You have a great night, and thank you Thanks all for having for me. listening and be here with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, guys. Good, Good night. Right. That was awesome having Adam yes. on. Uh, he is a tremendous source of information. Yeah, he is. I mean, if you look up, he even talked about a Kabbalah tree, that award, Kabbalah tree award that Trump received, which I had no knowledge about before he became president, I think, Steve. Mm -hmm. Well, something I have to look into, but that's amazing that Chabad is actually so involved with Trump. And keep in mind, Chabad are not, they're cult, they're Orthodox Jewish cult, and a lot of Jews are against Chabad. Right. A lot of Jews right. themselves are against them, and they know they are cold, but this cold is getting hold of our government, yeah. you know? That's why I say um, there's a lot of good Jewish people, and our big concern is, is that Israel is hijacked. Mm -hmm. It really is. There's a lot of good Jewish people that truly want to see the true Messiah. They may not believe that he's Jesus right now, but they at least have an open mind. They want to know who the Messiah is. And... Uh, you know, so this we stand with Israelis that that are believers and those that, the Jewish people that really want to know what truth is and not part of the propaganda, and not interested in beheading Christians or blowing up the Middle East and killing right. everybody in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, let me mention too on a, that conference that I got to get. Is it, Can you turn off the big light? Mind. It's on my. Oh, sorry about that. It's okay. Uh, but the. Conference. Deanne Loper is not going to be able to be there. She will be uh, joining us via Skype. We hope we can get that pulled off. We got to mm -hmm. check with the hotel. Yes. Uh, there are some very big concerns. She's had a lot of death threats, uh, so she will not be at the conference. Me and my wife will be speaking there, though. Uh, it will be very powerful conference. So we wanted to make sure you were aware of that as well. Uh, and. Uh, and, and listen, do you want to get into any of the other things we have on here? I don't know how much time are we already on. Well, let's, let's so touch a couple of them just quickly. I want quickly. to talk more about this. Uh, uh, before you do, though, let yes. me just say this, too, so I don't forget about this. The video will be here on Israeli News Live only for a couple of days, all right? It will be on Patreon. We are pre-recording the video as well, and there will not be the echo in the beginning. We apologize for that. I don't see it when it does that on there. I, I, when I hear about it, I know what's causing it. Uh, but it's just an open mic, a second open mic on the computer. So if you want to go back, catch it on Patreon where it will be posted, you can do that. Uh, but we have to move it to private because the thing is, it is targeted like 
Adam, he had three of his taken down. They will try to take this down as well. Right, and it's, then also, I think mean, you're gonna put it on bid shoot as well. I will also try to get it over on bid shoot. That takes a little bit longer. For some reason, bid shoot takes almost two days for anything to load there. I don't know why, but we are on bid shoot. Israeli News Live. Uh, we have put a lot of our videos there on uh, these chats that we do here, the Talmud, things like that. Check it out. Uh, I'm sure it'll be a blessing. And we actually loaded one video on my wife's channel, Rise Up Children of God, Yana's channel there, Rise Up Did Children we? of God no, YouTube. No, you took it off, I think, and you put it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the YouTube channel. Or did I put it on this channel? Yeah, you put it on Israeli News Live. Oh, wow, sorry. okay, never mind. I put it on Israeli <laughs> News Live. So, hey, you yeah. guys already probably know about it. I'm just sing, oh, yeah. I'm sitting here singing to the choir. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's quickly go into the things here because we probably wore everybody out by now, and I don't. Know well, you know, why don't we just do this next time? Because I had so many other things, but okay. we had Adam on, so next time we'll pick it up here and go on with our uh, other stuff that I prepared. Okay, sounds great, so, Adam. Thank you for joining us yes. tonight. We really, you know. You can't but love that guy. He is such a lot. Well, he guy. is very worried about his country, you yes. know, and uh, seeing all of these Chabad false Jews doing this to us and preparing Noahide laws and this is absolutely awful has nothing to do with salvation right, right? because we are exactly. not even saved by any laws so for any Christians to go along with this or say that this is a bridge between us and, and uh, between Christians and Jews it's all deceptive so yeah that's anyway, very true. stay with true anyway, jesus christ thank yes. you for watching and uh listen support the broadcast your help is so valuable uh, and, and so much needed and my wife don't never like me talk about this subject here but it is needed and we appreciate your support uh if you want to support i mean yana does such tireless research if you want to just if you want to bless her uh she never changed her driver's licenses of yet since we got married all those years ago because it's such a pain to do all that. But uh, so she still has her maiden name on her driver's license, which is Satova. So if you want to donate to Yana Satova, go right ahead. She would uh, it would be a blessing for her. Uh, or you could do Danun Institute, Stephen Benoon. You'll have that information in the description below. Also, uh, for those on the recorded, it'll be on the back of the computer right here. Uh, but anyway, I'll put it in the description below after the video is finished here. Uh, we thank you and uh, God's blessings upon you. Uh, also, check the new Institute out. I'm loading up new teachings on there uh, more regularly now, so I know it'll be a blessing to you there as well. I'm Stephen Benin, with my wife, Yana Benin. Yes. It is really Good night. Arab talk.